Okay, well, let's move on now. Um, on my left here, immediate left, is Severio Kreitli, and he's an independent researcher and honorary editor of the journal Nomadic Peoples. He has a background in philosophy and anthropology of development and a PhD on cattle breeding amongst the Wadabe pastoralists in Niger. Saverio specializes in the interface between pastoralist producers, science, and policy. And he's worked with pastoralists for the last 15 years in East, West, and Central Africa. And he's going to talk today about his, uh, a study he's been involved in, which is called Standing Wealth, Pastoralist Livestock Production and Local Livelihoods in Sudan. Oh, thank you very much. And thank you very much, everybody, too. I've come. Okay. Um, this is my outline, um, background methodology, key findings. Uh, also, the methodology, I will just give some highlights. I had to go a bit quickly. Uh, the bit of context uh, over the last 20 years, 25 years, uh, there has been a fundamental change uh, in the scientific understanding of the drylands and of pastoral production. And uh, uh, here are some uh, of the literature that has been instrumental to this change. Uh, the change has now uh, expanded to the policy level. Uh, we have uh, uh, important policy documents that have been produced uh, uh, over the last three or four or five years. Uh, this is a very recent uh, uh, from uh, uh, May, June this year. And if we could uh, um, summarize the, in, in one phrase, it's a bit mad, there's so much work, but if we could summarize um, uh, the, the, the key of this transformation in the way we understand pastoralism, that would be that um, um, instead of working with environmental variability, uh, uh, sorry, that pastoralism works with environmental variability as opposed to working against it, as in the tradition of animal production as developed in the West. Uh, and therefore, drylands variability can be turned into a valuable resource for food production. So there's a whole shift in perspective from seeing it as a problem, as a weakness, uh, to seeing it as an asset, and so on. And important aspects of this, uh, uh, two important aspects of this transformation are that we, 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 we have to uh, uh, acknowledge that today we, we have to look at pastoralism uh, in recognition of the fact that there are two different, at least, ways of uh, 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 understanding the term. And one is that pastoralism refers to uh, uh, a cultural identity and, and not necessarily also to a production system anymore. No? So when we talk about it, we have to be aware of what we're talking about. No? And the second aspect is that uh, when, when we look at problems of rangelands and management and pastoral development, uh, we have to be aware of the possibility that these uh, uh, problems are the result of pastoralism, but might also be the result of uh, the impossibility to apply pastoral production strategies. And unless we can make this distinction, the, 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 the space for confusion is very, is very high. And of course, the legacy of 40, 50, 60, sometimes 100 years of pastoral development working against the, the, these production strategies, as we have now understood, this is what really means this shift in, 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 uh, in this fundamental shift in, in the understanding of pastoralism means that we got it wrong uh, uh, before we had the shift. So we have, we have a long legacy of getting it wrong, which has left a strong mark. And therefore, before looking uh, at, at, the, at the situation on the ground and deducing that is the result of pastoralism, we have to have some tools to, to make this distinction. Um, as I said, I'm only giving some highlights with regard to the methodology. Uh, the, the first aspect that I want to highlight is that um, we, we try to have a fresh look uh, based on this different perspective of which we have become aware. Um, we, we try to have a fresh look at understanding pastoral systems and thinking in mind that uh, having had the fundamental change at the theoretical level, then we should expect a need for renegotiating the uh, uh, qualitative assumptions uh, that are behind quantitative analysis. Uh, so in order to measure anything, we need to have made decisions uh, uh, in qualifying what is that we are going to measure. And if there has been a fundamental shift at the theoretical level, perhaps these assumptions, these qualitative assumptions, are wrong. And we have to re 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 review them and renegotiate them before we can start to measure again. And the second aspect is that um, the data are very poor, uh, but nevertheless, uh, um, we can hope to uh, map 
uh, uh, and limiting the gaps in the data by using some, some uh, uh, techniques as, for example, total economy evaluation techniques and by contenting ourselves with, with very conservative estimates but at least capable of uh, fencing the uncertainty with which we work. So rather than say, oh, we don't have enough, enough data or good enough, there is nothing we can do. No, there is still something we can do uh, and, and at least we can map uncertainty. Four locations in, uh, uh, in North Kordofan, I'm not going to enter into the details of this, and I move straight into the uh, highlights of the findings. Now, the first important aspect we found uh, with regard to the value chains of, uh, of livestock production is that invisibility, the invisibility of production is, is not uh, uh, just in the lack of data, but is embedded in the methodology, in the, in the mechanism of appraiser for collecting this data and for analyzing them. So uh, uh, collecting more data is not a guarantee for actually getting out to this problem of invisibility. We have to look at the way, at the machine. We have to review the machine. <coughs> for example, uh, uh, the, the uh, livestock domestic market is, is severely hidden in this uh, Sudanese context. Uh, what we found just by reanalyzing some of the information we have is that the uh, domestic market is about 98% and the, the export market is about 2%. Now, most of the uh, tools for analysis uh, in the country focus on the export market, forgetting uh, the 98%. Um, the, the hidden importance of pastoral production also has to do with the fact that most of the focus is on uh, uh, how many pastoralists are out there. Um, there is, of course, a, a strong uh, component of this uh, uh, pastoral economy that has to do with jobs that are created outside the pastoral production itself, but that depend for their existence on the existence of the pastoral production. Uh, and I'm talking of uh, uh, all the people who work in the markets, for example, not just the traders, but the helpers and uh, the people who help loading and, and so on, all the bureaucracy behind it, uh, all the auxiliary markets that have grown quite a lot in Sudan um, over the last 15 years, uh, selling water for livestock, selling uh, grass, uh, selling water at the export uh, um, uh, uh, harbors, <coughs> for example. Um, feedlot operations in Khartoum, um, and most of the cattle, uh, this is only cattle, eh? most of the cattle uh, um, traded in Sudan arrive at some point in uh, uh, one of the big markets in, in, in Khartoum, and only the feedlot operations uh, produce this amount of uh, uh, um, uh, economy, this business, this volume of business, just to, just to pay for the, for the feed. Um, at the same, in a similar way, the, the, the water for uh, livestock at the export, water and, 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 uh, and feed, no? at the export, uh, at the harbour, uh, uh, just before going to Saudi Arabia, for the sheep, produces uh, a significant amount, as you can see. Uh, this, is, this money has to be paid in order to, to just feed the sheep for those uh, two or three days before uh, they, are, they are leaving the harbour. And, uh, uh, and, and similar uh, um, crop. This is a bit more tricky. It's it was very complicated to get some figure on uh, uh, the consumption of uh, um, feed uh, in North Kordofan. But we were able, this is only for North Kordofan, we were able to uh, uh, figure it out somehow uh, by, by uh, elaborating on the information got from the, we got from the, from the producers in the field. And as you, as you can see also in this case, there is a significant amount of uh, uh, money that changes hand because of uh, uh, um, feeding during the dry season. Um, another line of, uh, of findings uh, is, has to do with livestock mobility. Uh, one thing we, we, we realized, we worked with sedentary people and, and, uh, and nomads, but m mostly sedentary actually, although initially we, we, we tried our best to work with, with, with nomads, but because of the timing and the, and the location, we didn't manage so much. So it is particularly relevant, the fact that by working with people who describe themselves as sedentary, um, everybody actually turned out to be moving their animals quite a lot. So the, the sedentarity of uh, the producer does not translate into the sedentarity of uh, uh, the livestock. Um, not only, but even traders used uh, 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 livestock mobility for their own 
business by, by uh, taking advantage of uh, uh, the fattening possibility of moving the animals slowly, uh, say from Khartoum, from uh, Kordofan to Khartoum, or from Darfur to Khartoum, and, and taking a journey that could take maybe uh, 40, 45 days, taking three months to do it, and taking advantage of the rainy season to fatten the, animal, the animals on the hoof. So embedding a, a production component in, in, the, in the transportation of the animals to the capital and saving money on not having to keep them in feedlots once they arrive there. So mobility really is, a, a, um, is, is critical, not just to those who are described uh, in the statistics as nomads, but it's critical to most of the production we found. And they all use it more or less in the same way, yeah? targeting best bites and so on. This is a, is a scheme describing the um, uh, mobility patterns of uh, uh, supposedly sedentary sheep keepers uh, uh, in Cordofan. And as you can see, apart from one, uh, one uh, season in the year, so two, three months, the rest of the year, the animals are kept between, between 12 and 140 kilometers away from the village and, of course, moving on a regular basis. Eh? So these are sedentary in principle and describe themselves as sedentary. And, of course, without moving, they could not produce. Um, a second um, highlight under the, this, this uh, category of livestock mobility um, is the fact that we found uh, uh, um, a significant amount of uh, livestock crop integration on a very large scale. Uh, what do I mean with this? Um, usually, the notion of crop, crop livestock integration is understood at the farm level, uh, uh, at the level of the farm. And this is because of the tradition, the Western, the Western tradition, which you have a situation like this. And in, in, in the drylands, what we really had was this, uh, was, a, was a, um, a, a crop livestock integration on a much bigger scale in which you have specialized farmers and specialized uh, livestock keepers who meet at some point because of mobility, because of the livestock, mobility of livestock, meet during a certain season uh, and realize the integration in a certain season and then they continue to do, to do their work. So it's not at the level of the farm, is a much bigger, much bigger level. Um, this has, n has not been understood, has been very misunderstood. This is a quote from the 1950s, and you, you can see the, the highlight is uh, uh, you, have, you have people who farm who have uh, uh, land but no livestock, you have people who have livestock who have no land, and they don't meet, and this is a big problem. Well, they do meet, they meet because of mobility. Mobility is the language that allows uh, different production systems, not even s simply livestock producers, but also farmers, eh, to cooperate and to, and, to, and to talk to each other. So unless we have this capacity to let them move, these, these uh, um, um, forms of integration, of, of cooperations, get broken down with all sorts of unpleasant and undesirable consequences. And this is just a summary for you to remember, because we'll come back to this difference between temperate, en temperate environments and dryland environments. Uh, finally, obstacles to mobility have generated distortions in the way people move, but they still move. Eh? And uh, the, the, uh, the people who used to do long-distance transients, they don't do it anymore in some case. For example, people who used to go to South Cordofan in some cases don't do it anymore uh, for reasons of security. It doesn't mean they don't move anymore. In fact, they move more than they used to. They move also during the dry season now. Uh, they keep the animals moving much more during the dry season at great cost, uh, 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 social cost because the family is split, and of course economic cost because you have to, you have to pay for water, you have to pay for feed uh, or, or other or. Uh, if you don't pay for feed, it's because you keep your animals away and then you pay for water. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, you keep your animals near the water and then you pay for the, for the feed. So there are distortions that have modified the way this system works, not necessarily in the way the producers would like to, to have changed it. Hmm? I just give a couple of recommendations uh, out of the too many, probably, we have included in the report. Um, so the first one, if we had to, to, to summarize in one recommendation, what is the most important thing we could, we could recommend? Well, then that would be 
securing the conditions for livestock mobility according uh, to the logic of, of pastoral systems. So not mobility for the sake of it, so mobility understood as, uh, 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 understood as important uh, uh, from the point of view of the producers, eh? uh, which means improving reliable, untimely access. So you ha it's important to arrive on the pastoral at the right time, not just uh, 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 at any time. No? The right time is what makes it um, uh, important uh, because the, the, con the, 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 the nutritional content changes, of course, during time. So if you arrive early or later, you get less from the same grass. And this also means that the interventions must engage with the existing systems of production uh, uh, and be methodologically equipped to distinguish between the inner logic of pastoral systems and the distortions and adjustments following stress or, or constraints. Unless we have this capacity embedded in the methodology, we are, we are bound to, to make uh, uh, problems. And the, fun, the final thing is on modernization. This is because in Sudan there is a lot of talk, and not just in Sudan, about modernization. So it's absolutely critical to get it from the right angle. Huh? And the, the right angle we suggest uh, uh, um, is, is, uh, is the following. No, is modernization has to happen in a constructive way, engaging with pastoral systems. What do I mean? Well, imagine that you have a, uh, this is the situation more or less that people found uh, um, at the colonial time, roughly. You, know? you had a, the people were coming from temperate environments in a, with a tradition that was uh, following the logic of working against unpredictable variability and, and trying to uh, get economies of scale from exploiting uniformity and stability. And as a consequence, in this context, they developed uh, science and technology uh, such as to exploit this, this strategy. Mm -hmm. so they are right in a situation in which the situation of the dry environment, in which the strategy was actually working with, with uh, unpredictable variability instead of against it, huh? uh, and therefore exploiting sure lift concentrations instead of uniformity and stability. They didn't get that. They thought that the situation was the same. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they just ignored uh, or, or, or worked against the strategy they found. They didn't think it was at all necessary to do anything like that. And modernization took the form, took the shape of a simple transfer at the top, ignoring what was happening below. Mm -hmm. Now. We are now in a situation in which we have realized that there are differences, fundamental differences di between these two bases, if you want. No? So having realized that, we don't know what modernization will look like in the second case. No? And what we need, we need a, 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 new, a new development of modernization. We need to uh, mobilize, we need to do the same with, which has happened in, in the West. We need to mobilize science and technology, the opportunities offered by science and technology, to actually improve the strategies that are in place and are fit for the, for, for the uh, context of the islands. Uh, and that will have a different, different language. It's a word that has to be done. It's a whole world uh, of uh, uh, modernization that hasn't even been tapped yet uh, and, and needs to be done. Otherwise, um, we just end up with a, with a replication of a, 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 a real transfer um, from, from, from the wrong context. This is the research team. I finished. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Severio, for that very interesting uh, and thought-provoking presentation. And I, I found it very interesting, I think, in reading your report, and, and you may have said it about the at least 34,000 additional sort of jobs that it seemed to be generated through the, the livestock system. And also the, how crucial mobility is to, the, to everyone within the production system, not just those who are managing and moving livestock. 